everyone, I'm Dr. Isabella, I'm uh, a cosmetic doctor. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Isabella and I'm your personal cosmetic doctor and your friend and guide in the world of plastic surgery, cosmetic medical procedures, you know, the botox and the fillers and the lips and everything. I am making videos and posting like two three times a week on your favorite subjects and I'm helping you to be careful to do the procedures you want but to know what to expect and what to watch out for. Today I'm going to be talking about the seven things you need to know about Botox. Stay tuned and if you're new here please subscribe and hit the little bell button for the notifications. Okay, let's get started. Number one. Okay, Botox. So, Botox is a commercially used term for the neurotoxin botulinum toxin. Botulinum toxin is a substance used in the medical field which makes the impulses between the central nervous system and the muscles. Boring! Yeah, you're right, it is boring. Actually, basically, what it does, it makes your muscles remain on vacation mode even when you tell them it's time to go to work. Number two, is Botox a poison? Well, yes and no. No, 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 wait, 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 no, no, nothing bad is going to happen, you're not going to die, just relax, keep on watching this video. Why do people see Botox as a poison? Well, like I said, it kind of is. Well, it actually, it is derived from poison, from the poison uh, botulinum toxin. But, you know guys, it has been used for over 30 years in uh, the medical field. It is used when, you know, people have conditions where uh, the spasms are ongoing or like strabism. <clears throat> okay, so it's it's not a poison like you say, okay, I will take poison, I will die. No, and, and, and being kissed by the prince is not, it's not going to uh, wake you up. So. Sorry. Okay, so why is it called a poison? Well, actually, uh, somewhere in the 19th century, there was actually an outbreak of botulism. And botulism was a condition uh, where you know people did die from uh, eating uh, poisonous uh, sausages. So and then you know after that uh, there were a lot of discoveries and you know experiments and uh, scientific research and uh, in the field of uh, medicine we came to the conclusion that Botox can be very very useful in various things. Um, especially in the field of the aesthetic medicine to wipe out your wrinkles. Okay, so, you know, in the medical field there's a lot of medicine derived from uh, poison. Whether it's from plants or, you know, from origins from uh, animals or bacteria. But, you know, the definition of a poison is, you know, th there's a lot of reasons why something is poisonous. Did you know that drinking 6 liters of water within 3 hours can kill you? So don't do that. Okay, so, so to the question, is Botox a poison? Well, actually the answer is, like I said, it is derived from a poison, but it is not in any way poisonous or bad to your health, so don't worry and if you consider having a, a Botox treatment, you probably can. So, number three. So did you know there are a wide range of different brands of Botox? Yes, they are. Like for example, you have Azalure and Bocouture and uh, Botox, Dysport. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it as, <laughs> as you guys do in English-speaking countries. So you have Vistabel and you have Xiaomi. You have probably a whole bunch uh, of, of the more, you know, uh, depending in what country you, you live. But if you contact your clinic or your doctor, then they can tell you everything about the brands they are using. We're coming up to number four. Number four. So what can you get treated with Botox? So what areas, which 
wrinkles you can have disappear. Well, actually, when you when you uh, go on the on uh, Google or you search for uh, Botox and treatments of Botox, you usually end up on some web page of your favorite clinic or your doctor's web page or you know other uh, clinics or other uh, doctors web pages and usually there's a small description they tell you a bit of botox but usually they just invite you to come and uh, have a consultation with the doctor but still you guys want to know exactly before you go to the clinic or to your doctor you want to know what you can expect so the most treated areas with Botox are beginning from up till down the horizontal lines on your forehead when you go up like this you have these lines well if you don't like them and you want to get them treated you can secondly when you're frowning like that also that is a very common treated area with Botox then we have the crows usually when you laugh or you look at the sun you get these little wrinkles if you want to get rid of them you can just go and have a botox treatment then we have these little lines here we call them the bunny lines these are little bunnies okay i i, I know I'm, I'm not funny sorry guys now we have the gummy smile which is actually very uh, difficult for me to show because i don't have a gummy smile but she does Next, we have some people, their skin tends to be not really even in this area or you her front orders. When we treat it with Botox, it can smoothen out, which can give a really youthful and radiating finishing touch on your face. What we also can treat with Botox is when you clench your jaws. I, I know I do when I sleep. What we do is, this is called the masseter muscle. We inject Botox right in this area and it relaxes. It even can shape in your face to give back this youthful, beautiful V-shape, which I will be explaining a lot more about in one of my next videos. So if you're interested, watching and also a very useful and important use for Botox which is very popular in the months prior to the summer holidays is treating the sweating we call this the hyperhidrosis so the hyperhidrosis which is basically you know when you sweat a lot also we can treat that with a Botox and also even sweating on the palms of your hands, your feet and your forehead. That's all we can treat with Botox. One last thing, which in my opinion is a very, very important one. That's the use of Botox when uh, you have headaches and migraines, which is a uh, fairly new, just for the last maybe five or 10 years, it is used, but it has been proven a very very effective medicine against the symptoms of migraine and headache and because it is a, such an important topic i will be making one video especially for that treatment i will be making one video which i will dedicate entirely for a treating migraine and a headaches with botox okay so now we go on to number five okay so number five so how long can you have uh, benefits of the effect of botox treatment well usually after treatment you have to be a little patient for like two or three days when the botox will take effect because it's a medicine you know when you get a aspirin it takes like a half an hour or an hour to give you relief of the symptoms well actually uh, that's the same with Botox only it takes a few days longer so depending on the brand some brands uh, like Azalure and Dysport can give you the effects within like say three or four days whereas like Bocouture and Botox and Vistabel need a few days more maybe even a whole week before the first signs of the effect will appear. So, and afterwards, you can expect the first time maybe some two to three months 
again depending on the brand sometimes even six to nine months the effect to last the first time usually the effect is not so long in duration so for example you might experience an effect like maybe for three or four months after you have repeated the same treatment for a few times it can last longer it also depends on the area you treated the area that is most affected like the area you can expect the longest durations is usually these frowns we call the glabella lines which can keep away maybe for i don't know i won't give you any promises i don't know which brand your doctor uses but maybe even up to nine months so that's a good sign and remember if you keep on treating your area regularly and you keep repeating the appointments your wallet will thank you for it okay so number six I'm going to explain what a zone or area on, in the Botox is meant by. When you Google price of Botox or you go to the website of your favorite clinic or your doctor, usually you see either, well, nothing at all. They just mention they provide Botox treatments and they just tell you to call them and make an appointment. Other websites, might give you a description and usually they just state this is the price for one zone or one area well you know if you haven't done the procedure ever before you're probably wondering what in the world is a zone okay i will uh, show you what the zones are usually we call one zone one area like for example the glabella lines either if you have one or three it doesn't matter this we call a zone or an area. Also, your forehead is one zone. The wrinkles we call the crowd's feet is also one zone. Both eyes are one zone. So don't let them pay you twice. Okay, now we have the masseter, the clenching of the jaws. And depending on how severe your muscles are, you know, if you go to the gym, well, actually for your muscles, then sometimes we have to use two zones. So one zone for one side and one zone for the other. And sometimes if you just come regularly and you repeat the procedure on time, sometimes you can even have half, half, so you pay just once. And then be aware, you have uh, the bunny lines I've um, talked about, the gummy smile and the chin, usually we charge them for a half a zone. I also, in my practice, I give uh, my patients the possibility to have a brow lift with uh, the Botox and I charge it between almost the full price of one uh, zone towards the price of one zone. Maybe you just don't really uh, understand why, but that's because I really need to see what uh, your muscles in your face are all about how strong they are and which muscles I need to treat before I can give you that lovely open brow lift so your eyes pop up beautifully as they are. So there you go, these are the zones so now you know what you can expect with the pricing and what you will be charged. Last but not least, lucky number seven, what to do after procedure. So, okay, for the next 48 hours after you had the procedure, please don't do anything that can make you sweat. Don't go to the gym, don't go to the sauna, don't go tanning, don't even know. Also, three to four hours, don't bend over and don't lie down. And also very important, don't have any aesthetic procedures where scrubbing or, or laser treatments, just don't do that for about a week. And also very important, which I cannot emphasize enough, please, ladies, especially ladies, don't put any makeup on uh, in the first few hours because in your makeup there can be all this bacteria. Don't do that because you can have an infection and we don't want that. So just if you keep these things in mind, your after procedure will be absolutely perfect and you will enjoy all your treatments. Now you have learned 
7 important things you needed to know about Botox. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. Ciao!